Welcome my lovely primary four students. I'm Mrs. Dua Abbasi. Today, I'm very excited for two reasons. Do you know why? Because we have finished our unit one project, Living Systems, and we applied the project steps after we used what we have learned about the four concepts we studied. Do you know what is the second reason why I'm excited today? Right, today we are going to start unit two, which is about motion. And it has a lot of interesting topics because we all can easily observe the motion in our daily lives. We will learn the concepts and scientific terms while doing simple hands-on investigation using things all of us have in our homes. Now, get your notebook and pen. Open your student books on Unit 2. We are going to have a look at the introduction and the beginning of the unit. Do you remember the first thing we usually do? Exactly, we start with questions. And my question for you is, what are the ideas you can remember about forces, energy, and motion? فاكرين ايه عن القوة والطاقة والحركة? These terms are not new. You have learned these terms since primary one in Discover Book and you can easily observe them in many activities that happen in our daily lives. I remember when we talked about the forces in primary one and said that any object around us need a thing that causes its motion. الحاجات اللي حوالينا بتحتاج حاجة تحصل لها عشان تتحرك because any object will not move by itself, like when I push the object or when I pull it towards me. Like now, when I push the object or when I pull it towards me. In the two cases, the object moves. What I just did explains the first word I asked you about, forces. When I push the object, I use the pushing force and when I pull the object, I use the pulling force. These forces cause the object's motion. What about the second word, energy? Energy? Energy is like the energy we get from the food that help us do our daily activities. زي ما بناكل كده كل يوم عشان ناخد طاقة نقدر نعمل بيها كل الديلي activities بتاعتنا سواء كانت مذاكرة أو لعب أو تمارين this is the reason why energy is related to force and motion, which means if I don't have enough energy, I will not be able to move this object. I also have more types of energy. I'm sure you heard about them before. Do you remember anyone? Like the energy of light that we have studied in the third concept, light and sight. If you cannot remember some types of energy, it's okay. We will learn more about it in the concepts and lessons of the unit. Now, you can open your book on page 135 and look at the picture at what I already know activity. What can you observe? When I looked carefully at the picture, I observed two things I have seen before the wheelchair and the ramp. عارفين يعني ايه ramp؟ يعني الطريق يبقى ميل. Which goes down. It reminds me of the children playground slide. عارفين slide الزحليقة؟ Do you think that this ramp will affect the wheelchair's motion? What do you think? I think that although the person can control the motion of the wheelchair, the ramp will affect its motion. It means it will make the wheelchair move down easily and faster. أكيد الكرسي المتحرك ده هينزل على الرام بسهولة وكمان هينزل أسرع. Do you agree? The same thing happens when the car moves down on the ramp. Let me show you. Here is a ramp. إحنا اتفقنا إن الرامب الطريق يبقى ميل. Okay? If the car moves down the ramp, it will move faster, which means its motion increases. حركتها هتزيد. The opposite would happen if the ramp were upward. In this case, 
the motion of the wheelchair or the motion of the car will not be easy like this and it might need someone to push the wheelchair or in the case of the car we will need more force to push the car upward now what about the question below the picture let's explain it using our own words how do the man and wheelchair move this means how can you describe their motion do they need more force to move do you think that the ramp will help take your time and record your response on page 135 عايزاكم انتوا تبصوا على الصوره وتردوا على السؤال تفكروا هل الويلتشير هيحتاج قوه اكتر عشان يقدر ينزل هل هينزل بسرعه ولا لا فكروا في اجابات واكتبوا على طول في كتاب Till now, it's clear from what we see around us in our daily lives that each vehicle, vehicle يعني وسيلة مواصلة, such as a car, train, or bus, needs a force to cause its motion. أكيد كل وسائل المواصلات اللي حوالينا هتحتاج قوة عشان تسبب حركة, عشان تتحرك. So how do these vehicles get their force to move? بيجيبوا الفورس دي منين يا ترى? What do you think? The vehicles get such force from the fuel or gasoline because it burns and generates energy. This energy gives the car a pushing force to cause its motion. خلينا متفقين إن كل ال vehicles هتجيب ال force بتاعتها اللي هتساعدها على الحركة عن طريق ال fuel أو ال gasoline اللي هو البنزين اللي إحنا بنحطه في العربيات. وال force دي هتيجي عشان ال energy When this fuel is burned, hydina energy to get this force. I also read that some cars get force and power by solar energy. All I have said are different reasons for the object's motion that we are going to know more about in the concept of the unit. In the first concept entitled Starting and Stopping, we will focus on the different forces that cause objects starting and stopping and how does energy is connected and related to force which affects the object اول حاجة هنتكلم عنها ازاي الحاجات بتتحرك وازاي بتقف وايه علاقة ده بالانرجي and in the second concept entitled energy and motion we will know the energy has many and different types and learn more about how energy, force and work are connected. Do you know that speed is not the best thing and isn't safe during vehicle's motion? أكيد السرعة مش حاجة حلوة وإحنا بنتحرك بوسائل المواصلات. So speed will be the title of the third concept which focuses on the relation between speed and motion. علاقة السرعة بالحركة. The meaning of speed and how speed is related to distance and time إيه علاقة السرعة بالمسافة والوقت All these concepts will help us in concept 4 which is about energy and collisions Collisions يعني تصادم In this concept we are going to answer the question which is What would happen when an object collide with another object quickly? This will get us to the anchor phenomena for this unit Every day, there are cars or vehicles crashes around the world. Do you know what is the meaning of car crashes? Car crashes يعني حوادث السيارات. We always read about car crashes in the news, on, on the internet, or watch it on the TV. There are people who investigate the car crashes at the scene of the accident. They always try to know the main reason of the accident. دايما بيبقى في ناس في موقع الحادث بيحاولوا يعرفوا ايه اسباب الحادثه دي. Do you think that the reason of the accident is the speed? Or did the car collide together with the same amount of force? طب what did happen to the cars after the collision? 
يا ترى ايه كان سبب الحادث كان سرعه طب ايه اللي حصل للعربيات بعد التصادم after finishing this unit the scientists are trying to find answers to all these questions to know more about car crashes let's watch a video but remember to think of these two questions while you are watching the video what would happen to the energy when the two objects collide together ايه اللي هيحصل للطاقه لما two objects هيخبطوا في بعض and why does the car collision cause dangerous damages ليه دايما التصادمات بتعمل effects خطيره يلا بينا نشوف الفيديو Car crashes happen every day. Have you ever seen one or been stuck in traffic because of a car accident? Statistics show that a car accident happens in some part of the world every 60 seconds. That adds up to 5.25 million driving accidents every year. Car accidents can be dangerous. It's a good thing many of those cars we see out on the road every day are tested to make sure they are as safe as possible in a crash. Did you know that the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety actually crashes cars on purpose? Who would want to be in a crash on purpose? A dummy? This is a crash test dummy. Its job is to act like a human in a crash, just like real humans Dummies come in all different sizes. Before the dummies get strapped into the car, workers get the car ready. They drain most of the fluids, so there's no danger of the car catching fire during the test. Next, they put sensors and tape on the cars to help measure the impact. Then it's time for the dummies to get to work. They go through crash after crash after crash, reacting to the forces of the crash at different speeds. The reason for all these tests is to figure out how the energy of the forces affect the dummy. Watch this car hitting a wall. What do you think happens to the energy between the car and the object it hits? Here it is from a different view. Tests in the lab help safety engineers determine what would happen if the crash happened in real life. Not between a test wall and a test car, but two real cars in motion hitting each other. How would the result be different if the car was going fast, like a race car? What if the accident happened in traffic with other cars around? What happens to the energy then? Designers use the information engineers collect in crash tests to improve the designs of the cars. Car makers are using technology to make safety features even safer. Engineers are looking for ways to improve the seat belts you use today so that they are more effective for the specific person using them. Airbags have been around since the 1970s, but new technology is helping engineers develop safer versions that will inflate at different speeds and pressures depending on how bad the crash is. With over 1 billion cars on the roadways worldwide every day, it's not surprising that car accidents happen. But we are lucky that there's a dummy working hard to make sure we are as safe as can be when it does. We know there are scientists who study the reasons for collisions. And also, there are scientists who work very hard to stop car collisions. And these scientists be dressed with a sbab of tasadumat, and there are scientists who try to stop any collision. The scientists often use the data and information that the other scientists collected to decide the most important, safe, and secure features that driver needs to reduce damage if the driver has an accident. دايما الساينتست بيفكروا ايه الحاجات اللي تقلل الاضرار لو حصل حادث. I'm sure that some of you have read or heard about accidents and how the safety and security features help to save the driver's life. زي مثلا مين؟ These features are like the seat belt and the car design. 
the car makers are working on improving the safety and security features of the car. Why do, what did they do this? To provide passenger with a high level of safety in all car accidents. In all car accidents, you will always hear about the term energy. As you observed in the video, while the car is moving, it has great energy. لما العربية بتبقى بتتحرك بيكون عندها طاقة كبيرة جدا. And when it collides with another object, this causes so much damage. The role of energy in car crashes will be one of the main questions we will discover in the four concepts. أكيد هنعرف إيه علاقة الطاقة بالتصادمات وإيه الدامج اللي بيحصل بسبب الطاقة دي. Now, I need to ask you one important question. How can you develop a feature that can keep drivers and passengers safe when they have an accident? يا ترى إيه الحاجة اللي ممكن نخترعها تقلل من الأضرار في الحوادث؟ How can we develop a feature in the car that keeps the passengers safe? We will not answer this question by written and collecting model answers, but as we used to do, we should observe and analyze like scientists to answer this question. And this is how we are going to do the unit project entitled Vehicle Safety. The unit project is called Vehicle Safety, in which we are going to use what we have learned about energy, taqa, motion, al-haraka, and collision, tasadum, to research and redesign a safety feature of a passenger vehicle. في آخر الثيم بتاعنا هنبتدي نعمل project ونصمم حاجة تساعد على السلامة في العربيات. This feature will protect passenger from injury during collisions. Remember that. Our researchers' goal is to use what we have learned and explored to think about how we can develop a passenger vehicle's safety feature. This is a chance to write down any questions about different safety features. And in the lessons of Unit 2, we are going to do hands-on investigation activity. It means we are going to use simple tools that help us test and investigate concepts like motion, speed on surfaces with different inclines, or do investigations using car toys to show the effect of the collision. I'm sure that you are so excited to start Unit 2. We used to ask a question that you look for an answer to help you in learning the lesson activities. So, until we meet in the first lessons of the first concept, starting and stopping, think of this question, which is, if you were a passenger in a car, a bus, or even a train, what kind of forces you need to make the car move and to stop? يا ترى إيه هي القوة اللي هنحتاجها عشان نحرك العربية أو نوقفها؟ This is the end of Unit 2 introduction, and we learned about the concepts that we are going to learn in this unit. We also learned about the anchor phenomena and the unit project. So, be ready and always remember to ask, observe and think like scientists. Thank you, my dear primary four scientists and see you next time.